What's up guys, welcome back for games five and six of week two of the DPL between Wigglytuff's Guild and Trick of Eye. Today we have Palkia62, who you saw win last week, against who I consider to be one of the top three players currently in Scarlet and Violet draft, the JCM Shadow. If you follow our, our channel, if you've been here for a little bit, then you'll know that I faced off against Shadow in the regular season of the TGS, a league that I was just recently in, and I actually happened to walk away with a win, but it was very difficult, and it only happened because he mis EV'd his Kira. Uh, and he should have been a little bit faster, and he wasn't. So uh, we walked away with that one, but this is an extremely difficult player to play against, and our opponents have a Terra Latios and a Terra Yen Mega. Now, let me tell you something. Terra Yen Mega in the BBR, the other league that I was playing in recently, had the second most kills in the league after my Terra Scrafty. And in this league, in week one, Terra Yen Mega went crazy. And you're gonna see it go crazy again. You've seen the thumbnail, this mon, is one of the most slept on Terramons this gen, by far. I think that it has so much potential as a low tier Terra to pair with anything in the top ranks that I don't think it can go for any less than nine or 10 points when terra moving forward. Otherwise it is way too good. But let's hop right into this game and I'll show you what I mean. So. Shadow leads off with an Obama Snow and we lead off with Meowscarada. Now in prep, Every time we clicked low kick on Obama Snow, it dropped because we're choice banded. But they EV'd it to live the low kick and it's weakness policy Obama Snow. So it's able to get off a blizzard and knock out our Meow Scarada. Turn one. Now, Meow was actually a very important piece here, as you can see, probably. They do not have a real flower trick switch in once this Obama Snow drops. It's just Yan Mega, and if we can contain the Yan Mega, then it's it's over. So losing Meow is a huge blow. Now we go per Marina, they Ice Shard us for Chip, 22%. We go for Moonblast, down goes the Obama Snow, in comes Tentacruel, we go Muck, and Shadow doubles to Latios knowing that Muck's gonna come in. Now, had we clicked Moonblast again, that would have been play of the year. Honestly, that would have been incredible. And knowing how good of a player Shadow is and that he's liable to make moves like this, I might have popped the Moonblast that turn, maybe. Uh, expecting like a flip turn and then he has no switch in, etc. right? But that's only because I know how good Shadow is. And that's the only reason that I would ever make that play. I think that Palkia made the, rec the correct play for 99% of the circumstances. Unfortunately, Latios comes in and it happens to be choice specs and knocks us out with Luster Purge on our Primarina. So down goes that. Now, Latios comes in and we're able to go for a Calm Mind here and Terra Fairy immediately. Now, I'm not sure why Palkia Terra Fairied immediately, as we know that the Latios uh, is choice specs, I believe, from the damage into Primarina. Uh, I don't think that Latios can ever do that much to Prim. Uh, unless it's choice specs with Luster Purge. I'm um, like relatively certain. So I'm not sure why we terrored that turn, but anyway, we did. And uh, we're gonna go for an alluring voice. And once again, another weakness policy. <laughs> and this time it's Ting Lu. And I've seen Shadow run weakness policy Ting Lu. This guy loves weakness policy Ting Lu. Uh, I should have alerted my teammates to this, but he goes for heavy slam. We are Babiri Berry though. So we do live that. and. Next alluring voice, unfortunately, does not kill the, the Ting Lu. Down goes our Latias. So now we've lost our Primarina. So our fairy type, which handled one, two, three, kind of four months, 3.5 months. And uh, our choice band Mon, which handled like one, two, three, three and a half months. And we lost our Terra Mon. So now we're down to Tusk, Zapdos, and Amok. And we go Tusk, go for Rapid Spin. It's gonna knock out the Ting Lu, get a speed boost. In comes Iron Valiant. It is also booster speed. We switch out, go to Muck. Spirit Break comes out. We take uh, very little damage and we're gonna go for a Poison Jab and this Tentacruel is going to come in here and it's gonna go for Surf. And we're gonna go for Knock Off. Gonna get rid of its Pyapa Berry. And then it's gonna go for Surf again. And we're gonna go for Knock Off. And same thing again. So they're just trying to get our Muck low. And now that it's low and we have no Luster Purge switch-ins, hello, Latios is back and we die. 
And now we go into Great Tusk, and we take a Luster Purge, but we are Pyapa on our Great Tusk, and we're able to live it. We take 89%, but we're able to live it. And we go for Rapid Spin, and we catch the Valiant switching in with Heavy Slam, and knock it out. However, unfortunately, this thing exists. And Yanmega with Protect and Speed Boost is annoying as all hell. So we get up rocks on the Protect, so good play from Palkia. Unfortunately, at Terra Preview, we can see that the Yanmega is electric type and the Latios was steel. So the Latios never Terra'd. It had no reason to. So now the Yanmega can click Terra Electric. And if you know anything about this gen, it's that Zapdos is easily abused by Terra Electric Mons, regardless of what the Mon is. So long as it has even the slightest bit of like usable bulk, Zapdos cannot break it well. And normally Zapdos can run like a charge set. It can run like Eerie Impulse to deal with uh, special attackers. However, as you will see, the Yanmega clicks dual wing beat and knocks out Great Tusk. And then it proceeds to click Terra Electric Swords Dance. I swear, this guy is pissing me off, man. <laughs> it didn't matter at this point. So long as the Anmega trades like reasonably with the Zapdos, the Latios comes in and just knocks us out. So it really doesn't matter at this point, but we are gonna miss Heat Wave. As you will see here, uh, after Terra Blast, which does 69%, haha, we do 51, and the Yanmega is leftovers, man. It's, <laughs> uh, it's leftovers. It's quad weak <laughs> to, to rocks, and it's leftovers. I guess Shadow figured he can reliably spin on our team. Uh, there's no chance that we're going Terra Ghost on anything, and there's no way for us to really block spin. So uh, he figured that the uh, the Tentacruel with Pyopa Berry being that the only real super effective hit that we had coming its way was Psychic, uh, other than like Tusk's ground moves, but Cruel is faster than Tusk. Uh, decided to plop on a Pyopa Berry, guarantee the spin, and then get a Yen Mega for free. So great prep from Shadow. Not much we can say, honestly. Uh, just a really good Yen Mega set, really good sets overall. The double weakness policy really caught us off. And uh, yeah, they get that win. So. Now the series is 3-2, and we move on to game six. And here it is, the updated series score is on the screen, and we have, once again, a battle of captains. This time it's Money facing off against I. I. Now, I is a player that I have had a lot of trouble with previously. Uh, he's one of my kryptonites, I would say. He is uh, somebody that I have a very, very tough time defeating. This matchup was not easy to solve. I will tell you that. We went back and forth between sets. We tried to figure out uh, what the best brings on everything were. And ultimately we ended up with an absolutely bonkers team. Like if I showed you this in a paste, you'd be like, what? is this crap <laughs> what is this even for uh i promise you nothing makes sense here <laughs> so we're gonna go through this i'm gonna play it at normal speed at first but at some point i'm gonna have to put it on fast because the way this game ends is very long <laughs> so prepare yourselves so we're gonna lead off with our latios as they lead off with Terrapagos. so Okay, cool. We didn't expect a Tarapagos lead, but it's fine. Um, Latios is here. We switch out into Pheasantipity. This was uh, here to deal with the Tarapagos. We take a Meteor Beam. Uh, it does 38%. It's fine. Uh, we're going to go for Beat Up, trying to get a Poison on the Tarapagos uh, through the use of uh, Toxic Chain, of course. Uh, and you can see every Beat Up hits and not a single Poison. Now we Roost. They go for Rapid Spin, and the last Terra Star Storm did 56, we're at 58. 56, we go for Roost again. Guess we're trying to stall that out. And that one high rolls us. So it went from doing 56 to 56 to 58. Because they're at plus one, of course, right? And unfortunately, we walk away from here without a poison on the Tarapagos, which was the game plan. 
was just to beat it up and get off the poison. Uh, had it been uh, secondary, the, the secondary effect the item, uh, what is it, Cover Cloak? Uh, had it been Cover Cloak, I would have understood, but it was Power Herb, and uh, we didn't get a poison. So, unlucky. Now we're going to go into King Gambit. Uh, we go for Terra Fairy. They go for Terra Star Storm to cover it, because they know that Terra Star Storm does a lot regardless. And we click Thunder Wave. Okay. So now it's paralyzed, right? They go for Rapid Spin, which I don't agree with. I think they should have just attacked. We go for Terra Blast. And uh, we're going to follow that up with a Sucker Punch and basically sack our Gambit, but we don't because they get full Paran. So we get that turn. Now the Tropicus at 17% is going to switch out into Gliscor as we go for another Sucker. Okay, cool. I catches that play. Now we're going to switch out into Meowskarata here on Toxic. Unfort. Not something we really wanted to do. But now the Gliscor is going to go for Protect as we go for a Nasty Plot. Oh yeah. You guys ain't ready for this one. Had we not been poisoned, this thing could have literally won. <laughs> we go for, I believe, another nasty plot here. So now we're at plus four. Then we're gonna go for Giga Drain. Get back a little bit of health, but we are toxic, we are dying. Back comes in the Gliscor, clicks Protect again. We go for a, four, a third nasty plot, and now we're at plus six times four. I saw the number four, so I said, I, I almost said four. But now we're at plus six. And now the Gliscor is probably scared shitless <laughs> of like a Leaf Storm. And they're going to switch out into Ogre Pond. And we're going to click Pollen Puff and knock out the Ogre Pond. Now that Pollen Puff was not directed at Ogre Pond. It was directed at the Roaring Moon, <laughs> if I'm being honest. It was directed at everything really, except for the Gliscor, because we figured that the Gliscor wouldn't be st staying in. So Money makes their correct play here and goes for the Pollen Puff. We had discussed this during mocks that Pollen Pluff Puff is like the best click because you are now dark type, right? So nothing is stab. And even if something is stab, we have another, another tech move on here uh, that even if you hit that with stab, Pollen Puff is stronger. So it's best to go for Pollen Puff. And that's exactly what he does. And he takes out the Ogre Pond. So now it's a four to four game. Tropagos is dead. Ogre Pond is dead. That's two of their top mons. That's pretty good. Of course, we lost our Meowskarata, but our Pheasantipity didn't really matter. Our Gambit is low, to be fair. But now we're going to go into Latios. They go into Metagross. Now this, this is the lead matchup we want. And that might sound absurd to you, but when you see what happens next, you will understand. We click Reflect. They click Knock Off and trigger our weakness policy. And then we're going to go for Shadow Ball. Lower the Metagross to 29%. And then we're going to go for an Agility as it goes for another Knock Off. And we're going to go... And we're going to live bullet punch <laughs> because we're very bulky and we knock out the Metagross. And now we're at plus two, plus two, plus two uh, into Belly Bolt, Roaring Moon, and Gliscor. Now, in this situation, I wish we had Draco. I'm not going to lie because I'm pretty sure Belly Bolt would have dropped. But we end up going for Dragon Pulse. It takes 85. It definitely would have dropped. Uh, we get Toxic, which doesn't kill us off here. And now they have to sack. And we traded Latios into Metagross and Belly Bolt. And Belly Bolt was a big problem. So now we're going to go into Mudsdale and they go Roaring Moon. Now, this is where things get a little bit annoying <laughs> for us, for the players, and for you at home watching. So I'm going to put this on fast. <laughs> so here we go. Roaring Moon comes in, gets a booster attack. We go for Iron Defense, ID 1. Spikes go up, ID 2. Toxic, ID 3. You know what's coming. Uh, we're going to go for Body Press. It bounces off. Okay. We're taking Toxic. Toxic's again. ID again. Now, we're anticipating the Glide Score to be dual wing beat because that's what we saw the most in prep. It hits the Quackwivel, and there's no reason to really run Earthquake because T Gambit Terra's out of its out of its steel typing most of the time anyway. Now we click rest. You see where this is going. This is going to be a very, very long 60 turns. So I'm going to skip through it a little bit until we get to one very important turn. As you can see, we're iron defense, body press, rest. 
spikes, ID, spikes. Finally, they go for toxic. We click ID. Then I believe we click ID again. Then I think it's this turn we click rest. Nope, body press. So we should be resting as often as we can, honestly. But um, we're trying to waste some PP while we're at it. So good for money to do this. Now it goes for another iron defense. And right here, I believe it has to rest, obviously. Roaring Moon comes in. We go for rest. Switch to Goliath score. Sleep turn. Switch back to Moon. And Money Guy 9559 has to be some sort of celestial being or godly entity to have clicked Sleep Talk into Body Press on the turn the moon switched back in. And it dies. And now it's Gliscor with Toxic Protect Spikes and what we assume to be Dual Wing Beat against a Mudsdale with still quite a lot of PP, a Gambit and a Quackable. And uh, Money's going to play this, I believe, near perfect uh, and go for Iron Defense. Now, I need to learn a lesson about PP stalling. If the move that you have that causes us the most harm, which is Toxic, has more PP than we have recovery moves, click the damn Toxic. <laughs> you have 12 Toxics, we have six rests. We're not walking out of here alive. But instead, I decides that it's better to get into a PP war, not hit the Mudsdale, not let it rest because rest means two to three free turns. It's two free non-PP usage turns. So basically we're gonna get into a long skirmish here of I just not attacking, eventually decides to click his offensive move, which is dual wing beat, and instantly crits us, <laughs> which allows us to rest. So that's gonna like shorten the clock for the for the Gly score. So great crit for us, sucks for them. Uh, but uh, yeah, now we're just getting free turns because we don't have to click sleep talk uh, and we're just burning through PP. And dual wing beat, dual wing beat, dual wing beat. The Gly score can't stay in here forever. I think eventually it clicked uh, toxic or it crit again. Yeah, it crit again as we rested. Uh, not that that mattered because any hit allows rest because we're slower than the Gly score. But dual wing beat, dual wing beat, dual wing beat, dual wing beat, protect. Wing beat, wing beat. Toxic, so it's burning through some toxics. It's now down to five, three protects, three dual wing beats. We're almost at the end here. Now the Mudsdale has very little PP left as well. We're down to one press, one rest. That's it. And uh, now at this point, it goes for a, uh, a protect. Has three dual wing beats, two protects, four toxics. But what money can do, and what he should have done a while ago, because Gambit is useless, is switch out the Mudsdale into Gambit, allow for a uh, whatever turn to come out from the Gliscor, and then go back into the Mudsdale. And rest is what he should have done. Because uh, the Mudsdale can take spikes. It's not boots. It takes spikes. It takes damage to allow us to rest and get those extra free, free turns. Now, instead, we're playing this like this, but this doesn't really matter because even if the Gliscor knocks us out with dual wing beat here, it has uh, six remaining PP. The problem is that on struggle turns, Gliscor is actually taking less overall because of toxic heal, which is why we would have we liked to see Mudsdale switch out on the uh, when it had two rests left into Gambit, back into Mudsdale, rest immediately, burn the turns, go back to Gambit, go back to Mudsdale, rest one last time that would have burned more PP off the Gly score and would have al allowed us to basically win the end game because now it's just struggling 12% a turn, 12% a turn because Toxic offsets 12 out of the 24. But instead we go to Quack here and we click Triple Axel and we get one and a two and a three and down goes the Gly score. Now, I must say um, that turn against the Roaring Moon, insane. Absolutely insane. To hit the body press off of the sleep talk on the predicted switch out back into the moon is 
wild. Like, that burns an additional PP that you don't want to burn. But Money immediately recognized that I was going to try to switch around a bunch and clicked Sleep Talk and instantly hit the Body Press, which allowed for this entire endgame and a win. So we are now up 4-2 in the series. All that's left is the final two games, both Ultra Sun and Moon games, my own and Pyronox's. You guys are not gonna wanna miss that, so make sure to subscribe to the channel for tomorrow's video so that you get notified. Join my Discord server in the uh, description down below, the link is there. Hit the notification bell, like the video, all of that stuff. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys tomorrow. Peace.